Hi ladies, welcome to our breakout session. My name is Vanessa Gibson and I'm excited to be with you as we become equipped to step into a new era. I want to tell you a little bit about myself. My husband Travis and I have been serving together for the past 13 years at the Rock Church. He currently is the campus pastor at our Rock Church Point Loma location. We have two kids. My daughter Anaya is four years old and our son Levi just turned three. And when I'm not faithfully serving alongside my husband at the church, you can find me in the classroom because I'm a first grade teacher and I've been teaching for the last 12 years in Chula Vista. But before we get started, I wanted to remind you that this session is interactive. So that means you get to comment, ask questions, you can pop an emoji in the comments below, and our moderator is going to put all of those together for our live Q&A at the very end. So let's get started. This has already been such a great conference and it's going to continue to go that way. And we've been reading out of Isaiah 43, 19, where it reads that God is challenging us to open our eyes, open our hearts, open our minds to the new thing he wants to do in and through us. And so today I'm going to share with you all that God has put on my heart so that together we can walk into this new season, new territory, and new era. So let's go ahead and pray. Father God, I just thank you so much for the ladies that are attending and watching this conference online. Father God, you know where they're at. You know where they're at in this season. Would you bless this word? Would you anoint this word, Father God? Thank you for speaking through me. And we just pray that your name would be glorified through this as we step into this new season, new era. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I want to tell you a story about my grandfather, Grandpa P, or as my kids like to call him, Gigi Pa. Um, my grandpa is in his 80s. He owns a glass shop, and he's always been working, working, working. But about a year and a half ago, my grandfather had a stroke, and that left the left side of his body from head to toe paralyzed. And his life, as he once knew it, would be forever changed. He would have learned how to eat again, how to move his hands, how to walk, how to change himself, even part of his memory. But when he first began learning how to walk, it would take everything he had and all his faith to take a step forward. And I believe that's what God is calling us to do. He's calling us into, he's calling us towards, and he's showing us the new. But in order to take that next step, we have to faithfully take a step forward. The title of my message today is Faithfully Forward. And there's a really great story in the Old Testament in Joshua chapter 1. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and start turning towards there. That tells of one leader who's stepping into his new opportunity, his new season, his new direction. And there's some great lessons we can learn from him along the way. In the story, Moses has just died, and now Joshua has just been passed the baton to lead the Israelites into the Promised Land. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and open them to chapter 1 inside Joshua. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then, you and all these people, get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you will be careful to do everything that's written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. What a great story. There's so much in here, and I want to break it up into four points. 
Four points that are going to help us take a step and move faithfully forward. If you're taking notes, here is point number one. If you're going to step into the new, we must accept God's timing as our timing. In verse two, it reads right here, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them. If you think about these three phrases or words, now, get ready, I am about to. Just imagine yourself going on a date or maybe you're going to a wedding. Now, you're going right now. Get ready. That means not, you know, right before it means get ready, get prepared, start doing things. I'm about to. That means I'm about to do something special at the wedding or on the date. These three phrases represent timing, and God has a perfect time for you to step into the new. And I wrote this one down because I think it's good, and I think you should write it down too. If it's not God's timing, you can't rush it. And if it is God's timing, you can't stop it. And if we're going to step into the new, we have to accept God's perfect timing as our only timing. And sometimes we get so frustrated when we put a bid on a home and we didn't get it, or that job opportunity we wanted and that went away. Or maybe there's a person we're pursuing and that didn't work out. And we end up feeling discouraged or defeated. And I know I felt this way recently because this past weekend my daughter went to the emergency room. And there I was. My husband took her because now only one parent can go inside. And there I was waiting in the car wondering how she was doing at night. And I was texting my husband, is she okay? What's going on? Are they testing her for? What's, what's happening? And the waiting was the hardest part. But it was in that waiting that forced me to be ready, to be available, to ask questions, to be able to answer my husband's questions that he had, and really just not to lean on my own understanding, but to trust God and believe that he's going to make a way, that he's going to make my path straight. And if we're going to step into the new, we have to trust that God's timing is our timing. That leads me to point number two, if you're taking notes. If we're going to step into the new, we need to remember that God promises to be with us. In verse five, it says right here, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I believe God is telling someone today that he's with you. He's with you in your marriage. He's with you in your pain. He's with you in this trying season, this pandemic that we're all in. He's with you there as well. And he's going to be with you as you walk into the new. Right now, I'm a school teacher. I mentioned that in distance learning or virtual learning, remote learning, whatever you want to call it, that feels lonely to me. You know, I wake up at 5 a.m., I'm physically alone because everyone else is sleeping around me. And I know some of you are like that watching your kids go into distance learning, right? Like the students are like, what's going on? The parents are going, what's going on? All of a sudden, you're a school teacher and us educators are doing the same thing. And now I walk into my classroom and guess what? I'm alone there too. My classroom used to be filled with 25 students laughing, hugging each other, dancing, learning. And now I sit there in front of a screen alone, teaching to them or trying my best. And some of your kids are alone too at home working on their work. And it's not uncommon that stepping into the new feels like you're stepping all alone. I wonder how many of you watching right now feel all alone. Maybe it might be alone in your marriage. Maybe it might be alone at home, alone as a single mom. Maybe you feel alone in your faith. You're the only one, you know, walking in this. And then there's some of you who are alone physically, literally at home in this pandemic where we're told we can't go out, be careful. And now you really feel all alone. But there's hope. There's hope that we have. And when God calls us into that new, that new job, that new opportunity, that new season, whatever it is, remember, God promises to be with you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. You are not alone. Point number three, 
we're going to step into the new, we need to hold tight to God's word, the Bible right here. And it reads in 7 through 8, Joshua 1, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything that's written in it. Then you will be, it says right here, prosperous and successful. If you say God's word, memorize God's word, if you live by God's word, you will be successful. And there's a guarantee on that. It says it right there, ladies. If you don't believe me, just read it right there. One of my favorite stories that helps to illustrate this point is from the Old Testament in Samuel 2, chapter 23. It's about David's mighty men. And one of those mighty men happens to be Eleazar. And he's fierce and he's strong and he's famous for fighting when everybody else leaves the battle. And it says right there, right here, you can read it. His hand grew tired and the sword stuck to his hand. Let me ask you a question. Is your sword stuck to your hand? Or is it this, your phone? Maybe this is stuck to your hand, right? Or maybe it's the remote control that you're watching that's always stuck to your hand. Is this stuck to your hand? Because many of us know God's word, but we don't live by it. In fact, the Israelites had the same problem. God gave them his commands, but they lived like they were suggestions. I think some of us do the same thing, right? We pick and choose what we want God to say to us. Oh, I like that. I'll take that. No, I won't really do what he says there. We live like his commands or suggestions. But if we're going to step into the new, we have to hold tight to God's word. And here's my last point. Point number four. If we're going to step into the new, we need strength and courage. Right here in verse 9, God reiterates what he's already told Joshua twice before. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. God tells Joshua, be strong and courageous. Be strong and very courageous. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Can you hear God's voice? It's building. It's getting more passionate. And it even sounds like it's getting louder. I actually think God is trying to encourage. That means put in courage into Joshua, into a new leader who's filled with a lot of fear, anxieties, worries as he steps into his new role. And this is encouraging to me because I believe I have a lot of anxieties as well. I have anxieties. You have anxieties. I have fears. You have fears. We all have worries. And yet we are still called to move faithfully forward. This entire conference is all about that, about putting courage into you so that you can do what God is calling you to be and for Joshua, I think the only reason why he was able to step in the new and be strong and courageous in spite of the fears, the worries, the wonderings of what could be was because he received it, strength and courage from the one who is strength and from the one who is courage. That's who our God is, ladies. Think about this, strength and courage aren't the absence of fear, but rather the ability to take a step faithfully forward, regardless of what's in front of you. And I want to end with this. Normally, I like to ask my first graders some questions for comprehension to see if they understand. So I brought my clipboard with me, and I want to ask you a question. So what's your new? What's your new? If you're having a hard time answering this question, just think to yourself, what have you taught yourself out of that God is calling you into. I'm gonna say that again. What have you taught yourself out of that God is calling you into? 
It's that new job, that new relationship. Maybe it's a new opportunity, a season. Maybe it's a season of singleness for some of you. Maybe it's leaving that relationship. But whatever that new is, God is calling you into it. And if we're going to step into that new and move faithfully forward, we must accept that God's timing is our timing. We must remember that God promises to be with us. We must hold on tight to God's word. And lastly, you're going to need to rely on God's strength and courage. I brought this painter's tape with me today. I'm a school teacher. I love painter's tape. I like to use it on my bulletin boards to tape my papers up or borders. But I brought it with me and tear a little piece off. And I want you to imagine that you have a piece of tape and that you're setting it right in front of you. Okay, and everything behind that tape, everything behind that line, imagine right there, everything behind is your fears, your anxieties, your worries, your wondering of what's to come, and everything on that other side of the tape in front is the new. And I want to invite you all, wherever you are, to stand up with me. Go ahead. Do that right now. Stand up. And I on the count of three, together... We're going to take a step over that tape, over that line, that imaginary line that you have in front of you that's holding you back. And you don't have that tape in front of you like maybe I do, but you do have your fears, you have your anxieties, you have your insecurities, maybe your disappointments. You have all of those with you, just like I do. But once we take that step faithfully forward, we acknowledge that the old ways have passed and the new ways have come. And you know who's in the new? Jesus. The Bible tells us that for anyone who's in Christ, the old is past, the new is come. The old ways are dying and new ways are coming alive. So let's go ahead and do this together. Ladies, ready? On the count of three, we're going to take a step forward. One, two, three. Take that step. Father God, I just thank you so much for these ladies here today watching, Father God. You know the desires, like we talked about on their heart. You know their pain, their sufferings, their wonderings, especially during this season of unknown. We don't know what to expect, what's to come, Father God. But what we do know is that we can look to you for strength, for courage. We know that you are with us, God, and that we are not alone. We can trust your timing, and we can be patient as we wait on that, Father God. We thank you, Father, that we have your word to speak to us. And I pray that this message, your word, would minister to women to be strong and courageous, just like Joshua, to step into that new season, step into that new era, step into that new calling, whatever it is, Father God, would they know that you will be with them. They don't have to look backwards. They don't have to wonder what could be. They don't need to accept those lies, Father God. They can move forward and trust as they take that new step that you will be faithfully with them. Thank you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, ladies, so much for watching this session. Stay tuned because we're going to be right back to answer some questions with you.